Okay, so the next part, we're going to generate a line of best fit. So a line of best fit is just a way that we can use this data to predict. So if I go back to Desmos and I'm looking at what I've got on the screen here, I've got my variables assigned as X1 and Y1. Now, if I look at what shape this data is making, it is more inclined to make a straight line. Okay, it's more straight than it is curvy. These points over here might indicate that, hey, maybe it's following a different kind of path, but we're calling it straight. So if you go down here, okay, we've assigned our variables as y1 and x1. So when I'm trying to get the data to fit, I'm testing against those points. That's why I have to put in y1. Half of you will not put in the 1 and then it won't work. The next thing is on the left top hand side of the keyboard next to one, there's this squiggly little line symbol. You'll have to press shift to get it to appear. So that squiggly little line tells the computer that we want it to do a residual analysis. Now, part of your assignment is to talk about this. So you will need to Google residual analysis to work out what that actually means. So residual analysis is there. My other variables will be M x1 plus c. Now here I've got a couple of different things shown. I've got an r squared value, I've got an r score, I've got an m and I've got a c. So what this section actually tells me is the best line that the computer can get to fit these points is if the value of m is 3.83945 and C is negative 106.357. So the computer thinks that the best line that we could possibly use to generate to fit this data is Y equals 3.83945X plus oh, minus 106.3. 7, 5. You will need to state this equation in your assignment. It's not enough to just show that you've got it to generate this picture for you. Okay, we want to know that you can pull meaning from this to interpret what it says to you. Now that we've got the computer to generate for us, we have to start to consider the context of this assignment. If I look at this data point here, that tells me that when we have our x value is 0 and our y value is negative 1, 0, 6. Okay, that's saying that our x's are our users. So we'll have zero users when our population is at negative 106. That doesn't sound right. At what point can you have a negative number for a population? So we might need to think a little bit more realistically about this so that our data will hit through those points. If our population is at zero, then we would expect to have how many users? An easy way of thinking about this is, you know that in an equation, C is your y-intercept. If I take C away, that says that this thing has to cross through at zero on the graph, at zero, zero. So if I now try and fit my model without having the constant on the end, it will pass through that point at zero, zero, which is a more reasonable value for us. Okay, If you take away these data points, you might end up with a better R squared value. Now, the closer your R squared value is to one, the better it is. Okay, If you have something that's below 0 0.75, then that's you know not great, pretty trashy. But 0 0.985, that's a pretty good R squared value. But graphically, that when I'm looking at this picture, I can see that we're really not hitting a lot of these data points. This one over here is throwing off the trend. So I'm pretty sure that's India. If I remove India, I might be able to increase my R squared score. I might get a line that passes through these points instead. Something that you might want to consider and add into your report.